Posthumanism or posthumanism, meaning, after humanism, or, beyond humanism, is an idea in continental philosophy and critical theory responding to the presence of anthropocentrism in 21st century thought. Posthumanization comprises those processes by which a society comes to include members other than natural, biological human beings who, in one way or another, contribute to the structures, dynamics, or meaning of the society. It encompasses a wide variety of branches, including antihumanism, a branch of theory that is critical of traditional humanism and traditional ideas about the human condition, vitality, and agency. Cultural posthumanism, a branch of cultural theory critical of the foundational assumptions of humanism and its legacy that examines and questions the historical notions of human, and, human nature, often challenging typical notions of human subjectivity and embodiment and striving to move beyond, archaic, concepts of, human nature, to develop ones that constantly adapt to contemporary technoscientific knowledge. Posthumanism, or posthumanism, is a philosophical and critical theory that responds to the anthropocentric tendencies in contemporary thought. It explores the processes by which societies include non-biological human beings who contribute to their structures and meanings. This concept encompasses several branches. Antihumanism, a critical theory that challenges traditional humanist ideas about human nature, vitality, and agency. Cultural posthumanism, a branch of cultural theory that questions the foundational assumptions of humanism. It challenges historical notions of human and human nature, often rethinking human subjectivity and embodiment in light of contemporary technoscientific knowledge. Philosophical posthumanism, Drawing from cultural posthumanism, this philosophical direction explores the ethical implications of extending moral concern beyond the human species, expanding subjectivities. Posthuman condition. Critical theorists deconstruct the traditional notion of the human condition, reimagining what it means to be human. Posthuman transhumanism. An ideology and movement that seeks to enhance human capacities through technology, aiming for a future where humans have greatly enhanced intellectual, physical, and psychological abilities, possibly even achieving immortality. AI Takeover, a variant of transhumanism that suggests humans may eventually be replaced by artificial intelligences. Some proponents of this view argue for embracing this transition as part of a technological singularity. Voluntary Human Extinction, this perspective advocates for a future without humans, where humanity willingly chooses to cease existence to allow for a post-human future. These branches of posthumanism reflect a diverse range of philosophical and ethical considerations about the future of humanity and its place in the broader context of the world. Theodore Schatzky outlines two varieties of philosophical posthumanism. The first, objectivism, challenges the humanistic focus on the subjective or intersubjective by emphasizing the role of non-human agents and their independence from human activity and conceptualization. This perspective asserts that humans and non-humans co-determine one another. The second agenda prioritizes practices over individuals, suggesting that practices constitute the individual. Herman Duyaweerd, while not explicitly labeled as a posthumanist, critiqued humanism and proposed a philosophy that starts from a different religious foundation. He prioritized law and meaningfulness as the basis for humanity and all existence. According to Duyaweerd, meaning is fundamental to all created beings, including human and non-human entities. Both function subject to a common set of laws or aspects, such as the aesthetic, juridical, ethical, and faith aspects. This perspective integrates both the objectivist and practices versions of posthumanism by allowing non-human agents their own subject functioning in various aspects. The emergence of philosophical posthumanism can be traced back to the late 20th century, with theorists like Ehab Hassan suggesting that humanism was transforming into something he called posthumanism. This shift was seen as a response to inherent assumptions within humanistic and enlightenment thought. Posthumanism has been developed and discussed by various cultural theorists, including Michel Foucault, Judith Butler, and cyberneticists such as Gregory Battison, Warren McCulloch, and Norbert Wiener. These thinkers, along with others like Bruno Latour, Carrie Wolfe, Elaine Graham, N. Catherine Hales, Benjamin H. Braddon, Donna Haraway, Peter Sloterdijk, Stefan Lorenz Sorner, Evan Thompson, Francisco Varela, Humberto Maturana, Timothy Morton, and Douglas Kellner, have contributed to the diverse and evolving discourse on posthumanism. Their work often critiques and extends beyond postmodernist studies, offering new perspectives on the human condition and challenging traditional humanistic notions. 
Through their writings, they have helped shape the development and understanding of posthumanism as a complex and multifaceted concept. Posthumanism differs from classical humanism by rejecting anthropocentric dominance, relegating humanity back to one of many natural species. According to this view, humans have no inherent rights to destroy nature or set themselves above it in ethical considerations. Human knowledge is also seen in a less controlling position, no longer the defining aspect of the world. Human rights are placed on a spectrum with animal rights and posthuman rights. Posthumanism acknowledges the limitations and fallibility of human intelligence without abandoning the rational tradition of humanism. Proponents of posthuman discourse suggest that innovative advancements and emerging technologies have transcended the traditional human model proposed by philosophers like Descartes. Posthumanistic views can also be found in the works of Shakespeare. Unlike humanism, posthumanism seeks to redefine the boundaries surrounding modern philosophical understanding of the human, representing an evolution of thought beyond contemporary social boundaries. It rejects attempts to establish anthropological universals with anthropocentric assumptions. Critics describe the emergence of posthumanism as a critical moment in modernity, with key ideas originating in modern fiction, Nietzsche, or as a modernist response to the crisis of historicity. Nietzsche's philosophy has been identified as posthumanist, and Foucault's perspective on posthumanism distinguishes humanism from Enlightenment thought. According to Foucault, humanism sought to establish norms, while Enlightenment thought aimed to transcend all material boundaries, including those constructed by humanistic thought. Posthumanism, drawing on the Enlightenment's challenges to humanism's boundaries, rejects various assumptions of human dogmas, anthropological, political, scientific. It takes the next step by attempting to change how we think about being human. This involves decentering the human in multiple discourses evolutionary, ecological, technological, and examining those discourses to uncover inherent humanistic, anthropocentric, normative notions of humanness and the concept of the human. Contemporary posthuman discourse seeks to explore and challenge the concept of the human in today's cultural and historical contexts. N. Catherine Hales, in her book, How We Became Posthuman, discusses the evolving relationship between humans and intelligent machines. This coevolution, as some posthuman theorists argue, allows individuals to extend their subjective experiences beyond the confines of physical embodiment. Hales's perspective, often termed Technological posthumanism highlights the increasing significance of visual perception and digital representations in this context. Despite efforts to deconstruct perceived boundaries, these boundaries remain crucial for knowledge acquisition. The use of technology in contemporary society further complicates this relationship, reflecting the ongoing evolution of the posthuman condition. N. Catherine Hales discusses how human bodies are being translated into information, as proposed by Hans Moravitz, highlighting how the boundaries of our embodied reality have been compromised in the current age. This has led to a loss of subjectivity based on bodily boundaries in posthumanism. This perspective, which challenges narrow definitions of humanness, is often associated with Donna Haraway's concept of the cyborg. However, Haraway has distanced herself from posthumanistic discourse due to the term being used by other theorists to promote utopian views of technological innovation, which align more closely with transhumanism. Posthumanism, while broad and complex, has relevant implications for today and the future. It seeks to redefine social structures without relying on inherently human or biological origins, focusing instead on social and psychological systems where consciousness and communication could potentially exist as unique disembodied entities. This raises questions about the current and future use of technology in shaping human existence, as well as new concerns related to language, symbolism, subjectivity, phenomenology, ethics, justice, and creativity. Posthumanism can be categorized into non-technological and technological forms. Non-technological posthumanism is distinct from scholarly methodologies but shares some connections. It has been explicitly studied as a scholarly approach since the late 1970s, although the processes it examines, such as posthumanization, have ancient roots, non-technological. Posthumanization can be seen historically in societies where animals were considered household pets or where supernatural beings played a role. This form of posthumanization is evident in mythological and literary works, as well as in the construction of physical structures believed to be inhabited by quasi or para human beings. 
Philosopher Francesca Ferrando suggests that the notion of spirituality broadens our understanding of the posthuman, allowing for an investigation of technologies of existence beyond technical technologies. Technological posthumanism focuses on the impact of technologies such as robotics, cybernetics, biotechnology, and nanotechnology on the concept of the posthuman. It explores how these technologies redefine what it means to be human and how they shape human existence. Technological posthumanization involves efforts to directly alter human social, psychological, or physical structures and behaviors through technologies like genetic engineering or neurocybernetic augmentation. Cyborg theory often studies such forms of posthumanization. Alternatively, technological posthumanization can indirectly affect human society through the deployment of social robots or the development of artificial general intelligences and sentient networks that interact with humans. Science fiction, particularly cyberpunk, has long explored these dynamics. In recent decades, scholars and policymakers have increasingly focused on technological posthumanization. This trend has sparked diverse responses, with some viewing it as a pathway to a more advanced transhumanist future, while others caution against the potential fragmentation of society, loss of meaning, and subjugation to technology. Processes of technological and non-technological posthumanization both tend to result in a partial, de-anthropocentrization, of human society, expanding its circle of membership to include other types of entities and decentering the position of human beings. A common theme of posthumanist study is the way in which processes of posthumanization challenge or blur simple binaries, such as those of, human versus non-human, natural versus artificial, alive versus non-alive, and, biological versus mechanical. Posthumanism and transhumanism are often confused, but they differ in their views of anthropocentrism. Posthumanism is sometimes used as an umbrella term that includes both transhumanism and critical posthumanism. Transhumanism is seen as an intensification of humanism, suggesting that humans are not yet posthuman but can become so through human enhancement, often through technology. It retains a focus on humans as the center of the world but also sees technology as crucial for human progression. Critical posthumanism, on the other hand, rejects human exceptionalism and human instrumentalism. It opposes the idea that humans are unique creatures and that humans have the right to control the natural world. The main distinction between the two is their view on the importance of human beings. Transhumanism is more prominent in popular culture, especially in science fiction, while critical posthumanism is less so, being referred to as the pop posthumanism of cinema and pop culture. Critics argue that all forms of posthumanism, including transhumanism, share more similarities than their proponents realize. They suggest that posthumanism leads to the disappearance of the human as a category of being, with Paul James stating that it allows the human to flow down the plug hole of history. This criticism highlights the ontological implications of posthumanism, suggesting that it erases the essence of humanity in favor of an unspecified idea of saving something about us as individuals and communities. Some posthumanists in the humanities and arts criticize transhumanism, as they believe it extends values of Enlightenment humanism and classical liberalism, such as scientism. According to Shannon Bell, transhumanism imports liberal human values into the enhancement of the human through technology, while posthumanism seeks to develop new understandings of various aspects of life and existence with a stronger critical edge. Donna Haraway, despite her philosophical alignment with posthumanism, rejects the term in favor of companion species, emphasizing the coexistence of humans with non-human entities. This reflects a skepticism towards the term posthumanism, even among those who are accepting of its underlying ideologies. The critique of posthumanism regarding its treatment of race raises important questions about how the turn to posthumanism often overlooks issues of race. Zakia Iman Jackson argues that the impulse to move beyond the human within posthumanism ignores the contributions and critiques produced by black thinkers such as Frantz Fanon, Amy Césaire, Hortense Spillers, and Fred Moden. Jackson suggests that race, especially blackness, plays a crucial role in defining human and human distinctions and that posthumanism should not overlook this aspect. Furthermore, she argues that a gesture toward a beyond actually returns us to a Eurocentric transcendentalism long challenged highlighting the need for a more nuanced approach to posthumanist discourse that considers issues of race and racialized experiences. In Shakespearean terms, the critique of posthumanism regarding its treatment of race might be likened to a subplot that is often overlooked in the main narrative. Zakia Iman Jackson's argument can be seen as a plea to include the voices and perspectives of black thinkers, such as Frantz Fanon, Amy Césaire, 
Hortense Spillers, and Fred Moden, in the grand stage of posthumanist discourse. Just as Shakespeare's plays explore complex themes through various characters and subplots, posthumanism should not neglect the important role that race, especially blackness, plays in defining human-non-human distinctions. By acknowledging these voices, posthumanist scholarship can avoid the pitfalls of Eurocentric transcendentalism and embrace a more inclusive and nuanced understanding of what itin Shakespeare's, The Tempest, the character. Caliban can be seen as embodying the critique of posthumanism regarding its treatment of race. Caliban, a native inhabitant of the island, is often portrayed as a savage and beast-like figure by the colonialist Prospero. This portrayal reflects the tendency in posthumanist discourse to overlook or marginalize non-European perspectives, such as those represented by Caliban. Just as Caliban's voice and agency are suppressed in the play, so too are the voices of black thinkers and their critiques often marginalized in posthumanist scholarship. Integrating these perspectives into the discourse would enrich and deepen our understanding of posthumanism, much like how Caliban's character adds complexity to the themes of power, colonization, and identity in The Tempest, means to be human. In Shakespeare's The Tempest, the character Caliban can be seen as embodying the critique of posthumanism regarding its treatment of race. Caliban, a native inhabitant of the island, is often portrayed as a savage and beast-like figure by the colonialist Prospero. This portrayal reflects the tendency in posthumanist discourse to overlook or marginalize non-European perspectives, such as those represented by Caliban. Just as Caliban's voice and agency are suppressed in the play, so too are the voices of black thinkers and their critiques often marginalized in posthumanist scholarship. Integrating these perspectives into the discourse would enrich and deepen our understanding of posthumanism, much like how Caliban's character adds complexity to the themes of power, colonization, and identity in The Tempest.